Hey guys, and welcome back to Chemistry 1032 Instructional Videos. I am your professor, Dr. Russell Betts, and now we'll be talking about 11.3 DNA, deoxyribonucleic acid. Now, the next few minutes of this video is just going to be some introductions, some background, stuff like that. So just kind of bear with it, uh, write down some notes, uh, things will be okay. Now, first things first, the base sequences in the nucleic acids stored as DNA is in the cell's nucleus, is in the cell's nucleus. And they hold the key for protein production. They tell a cell or they tell something, some enzymes, how to build a protein. So this whole thing is about building protein. DNA is literally a storage vessel of information on how to make protein. Now, in the late 1940s, that's when like, the whole big DNA thing started. It was in the late 40s. Um, there were some discoveries made that led to the, uh, the understanding of the structure, which was a big deal. Okay, This guy named Erwin Kargaff, can't pronounce his name, sorry, noted that the amount of adenine is always equal to the amount of thiamine. That was a huge discovery. That meant that if you have one adenine, you have to have one thiamine. And that was a big discovery, pretty big deal because that kind of led up and suggested base pairing, okay? Now, we'll come into that a little bit later. And he also discovered that the amount of guanine was equal to the amount of cytosine, another big deal, okay? So the number of purines equals the number of pyrimidines in DNA. So just a few things you might want to just jot them down. Not too big of a deal, but still pretty big deal. Now, the secondary structure of DNA the primary structure was just the sequence of what, what base pairs go after who. That's kind of like in protein chemistry, okay? The secondary structure, Watson and Crick discovered it was a double helix. It was a double helix. Now, that was a pretty fantastic discovery. Watson and Crick figured that out. Now, to understand what a double helix is, a double helix is essentially a ladder that's been twisted, okay? So imagine the base pair, oh, sorry, pardon me, the phosphate sugar backbone on either side are the handles of the ladder and the rungs in the middle, the rungs in the middle, those would be the base pairs, okay? Now, again, here it is. Uh, the double helix is envisioned as a twisted ladder. Now, the two strands both have bases in the center. So one strand of DNA has its bases facing the center. The other strand, its bases are facing the center. So the bases are facing each other facing towards each other. Their backbones run in opposite directions, anti-parallel. They run in an opposite direction, anti-parallel. One strand goes in the five prime, three prime direction, and the other one goes in the three prime, five prime direction. So the one, one runs up and down, the other one's down and up. They run in opposite directions. Okay, that's, that's all it is. One, they just run in opposite directions, it's known as being anti-parallel. Now, here's a key point. Each ladder rung associated through hydrogen bonding. Hydrogen bonding holds the base pairs together. Okay? Now they're not covalently bonded. It's just a it's an intermolecular force that's holding these two strands of DNA together through hydrogen bonding of the bases, through the nitrogenous bases. That's what's holding them together. Is the intermolecular force known as hydrogen bonding holds the two strands of DNA together through multiple hydrogen bondings of the base pairs up and down DNA. That's holding it together. Remember I told you that hydrogen bonding was a big freaking deal? It's a big freaking deal. Okay? It holds DNA together. It holds the two strands together in the, in the, in the uh, double helix. Okay? Now, the pairs A and T and G and C are what they call complementary base pairs they hydrogen bond really well together. That's what basically what that means. Adenine and thymine, guanosine and cytosine, they love to hydrogen bond to each other. They set up a perfect hydrogen, well not, I wouldn't say perfect, they set up a very good hydrogen bonding uh, complement to each other, okay? Now notice, adenine and thymine make two hydrogen bonds. Wow, that's pretty interesting because a lot of molecules we've seen so far only make one, they make two. And guanine and cytosine, they have three hydrogen bonds. So that's pretty good. That's interesting. You have well, two base pairs that make two hydrogen bonds and two base pairs that make three hydrogen bonds. There's going to be a lot of 
attraction for these two molecules to come together. And that's what's holding DNA together, which is fascinating. Fascinating. Now, uh, here's a, just a quick little point. There are three billion base pairs in one human cell. One. One cell, three billion base pairs. Now, you take that and think about that for a minute, and you tell me that's not interesting. Three billion base pairs in one cell. Think about how many cells you must have just in one little centimeter of your skin. Three billion base pairs per cell. Okay, here's a little drawing here. Here's the hydrogen bonding of adenine and thymine. As you can see, let me grab a different color. Right here and right here are the hydrogen bonding uh, interactions holding these two base pairs together. Okay, they are highly attracted to one another. Here's guanine and cytosine. One, two, three hydrogen bonding pairs. That's, that's incredible. So what, basically what we have is three billion of these base pairs running up and down DNA all attract it together through hydrogen bonding. That's really interesting because, because the two strands of DNA are not covalently bound together. They are highly attracted through multiple, multiple, multiple billions of hydrogen bonds. Amazing. Simply amazing. And uh, one last thing. Tertiary structure. Chromosomes. Chromosomes. Chromosomes are how your body stores its DNA, how they, they wrap it up nice and neatly so that it can be found again. So the sections of the DNA that are needed can be found again. Now, because DNA has a helical twist, further twisting, further twisting called supercoiling makes the DNA more compact. Now imagine you have three billion base pairs, billion with a B. Your body has to store that somewhere where it's, first of all, put away neatly, so it can be reaccessed when needed. Okay, so now the DNA uh, will form what is called chromosomes. Okay, and the chromosomes basically are DNA being packaged into a uh, a small little concise package so that it can be accessed again. Okay, now DNA is supercoiled around these things called histones. Histones are what the DNA is being wrapped around and being stored with. So here in this schematic over here, you can see the DNA and the histones are beginning to interact and coil around each other for um, long-term storage or even short-term storage. And so they can be accessed as required. And that's the end of 11.3. So we're going to take a break here and we're going to come back and do 11.4. Um, so far, so good, right guys? It's, it's difficult. There's a lot to know, but I think everyone at this point now is probably fascinated by it. I know I am. Uh, DNA is fascinating how complicated, but yet how simple and basic it is. So hopefully you'll, uh, you'll enjoy it as much as I do, and I'll see you guys in the next video. And now with that, of course, I'm going to wish you good luck and good chemistry.